next storyteller on stage, make a lot of noise, Ace Cameron Varney. Thank you, Dixie. All right, y'all. And I, perf I perform as Lucky Johnson with the Beauty Kings. Um, I'm now a transgender drag king. Uh, I've been on hormones for four years now. And I'm going to tell you the story a little, going a little farther back than that, though. When I kind of first really understood that I saw myself as masculine in other time, the first time that others have saw me as that masculine being as well. Um, so I am from Whittier, California, which is right on, oh, hey, all right. So that's right on the, uh, as we call it, the Orange Curtain. It's where it's almost Orange County, but not. You're still in LA, East LA. And so I uh, was an only child of a devoutly religious, conservative Christian family. We uh, were congregants of First Evangelical Free Church of Fullerton. I don't know if y'all know that. It's one of the mega churches in Orange County. And they really didn't encourage any kind of sexuality, uh, as you can imagine. Definitely, uh, definitely not the kind of sexuality that I ended up pursuing so, or, or realizing in myself. So that was definitely um, an isolating experience. Uh, high school was as well, uh, just as isolating. I was pretty much only visibly queer kid there, uh, kind of awkward tomboy. Um, I was the hairy-legged lesbian on the boys' football team. I certainly was. I was a special teams, defensive tackle, and pulling guard. And yeah, that was one of the great things that at least, even though I was an outcast, I still was able to be in varsity athletics and, and use my extremely already masculine looking body uh, for, for those purposes and I was pretty successful in my athletic career. But that's pretty much it. No one knew what to do with me. The guys on my football team were cool because I was good. Uh, they didn't give me a lot of shit to my face but I knew there was probably some trash talk. And the kids at school were kind of scared of me so they, they wouldn't really talk shit to my face either. Uh, that's the chick that plays football, watch out. So. But I was just incredibly lonely. I was very isolated. I ate lunch with the teachers a lot. This is true, yeah, okay. <laughs> they were rad though, so don't feel too bad for me. Um, but yeah, so as soon as, the, the, real, the real change that happened was when I got my license, thank God. Especially here in Southern California, it's such a car culture that that's really your, your ticket to freedom. You're, you know, you get your, your wings, so to speak, when you get your license. So. 17, I was able to seek out my community and finally, uh, you know, find others like me if they, if they were out there. And I found the Orange County Gay and Lesbian Center. It was about 20 miles from my house. Yeah. And they had, they had great services available there. They had a youth drop-in night um, and they had some great, uh, some great facilitators at that drop-in night. And so that was really uh, one of the, the big changing turning points in my life was when I was able to go there, find fellowship, go on the, the chick chat nights, which is <laughs> the reason I would go is for not, uh, definitely to, to, to see where the girls are. And, and I was successful and also, uh, there was a particular woman as well. One of the facilitators definitely caught my eye. Uh, and I developed this puppy dog crush on her. <laughs> her name was Sarah. And she had beautiful brown doe eyes, a uh, incredible smile that lit up the room, and this very kind laugh that was so infectious and just the best fierce radical politics you'd ever want. And all the weird little queers were in love with her, not just me. And so I went every week. That was my new church. Uh, yeah, definitely. So the, my senior year, yeah, thankfully I was connected to that. And that really helped me um, just kind of come into my own, really see myself in my, in my gender and, and, and start that journey toward really ultimately discovering that I was trans. But, um, but that senior year, I found out that I was accepted to University of Oregon. I was so happy. A lot of my hard work and... Uh, and uh, in straight A's, they finally paid off for me. So I was able to, um, to say, hey, everyone, I'm, I'm going up north, and 
we had a little goodbye party for me. And at that goodbye party at the Youth Drop-In Center, Sarah gave me two things. She gave me my first uh, copy of Stone Butch Blues by Leslie Feinberg. And she inscribed um, like inside cover uh, to one of the last uh, true gentlemen to me. <laughs> Thank you. And she also handed me something else that was wrapped up and was pretty heavy for its size, and I opened it up, and it was a 32-ounce bottle of ID Glide Lube. With the <laughs> pump top. And she said, have fun in college. <laughs> Go north, young man. And I certainly did. <laughs> so I went up to Eugene. I, became, I quickly became a uh, dirty duck. I uh, joined the women's rugby team, obviously. <laughs> And I signed up immediately for uh, women's studies as soon as possible. That was the first class, absolutely, that I wanted to take. Uh, also trying to find where the girls are. <laughs> so that was great. And I also uh, was able to uh, move into a dorm hall. It was all girls, and that was excellent as well. It was a communal bathroom. And so in the first week there, we were all moving in. I was getting used to all these fresh faces. And, uh, and, I had, and, I, and I had a young lady come right up next to me, brushing her teeth. And all she said was, hmm, I see you have Batman sheets. I'm sorry, they're not Superman sheets. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do with that sass. And so I basically continued flirting with her for a few days. Didn't take too long. And it ended up making her come on those Batman sheets. So, a lot to be said for that. I guess the uh, Superman sheets didn't win out. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that, was, that was great. And it was really the first time that um, I was able to, to own my sexuality and rejoice in it and feel good and strong and uh, have that adventure aside and, and feel, feel safe. And there was definitely um, no shame anymore. That definitely I felt so much linked with sexuality. That was the message that I was given my entire life, was that you know, sexuality is bad, it's dirty, it's shameful. And, uh, and I was able to basically overcome that. And I really, I really thank uh, Sarah and that bottle of lube. It lasted through the third quarter. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and that's the story. I also played, I continued to play rugby uh, through, uh, uh, through University of Oregon and also um, a few years after school. But, uh, but I um, was able to just look back on uh, the influence of, of, of Sarah in my life and also that, <laughs> that, first, that first hookup that basically was the, the end of my virginity. It was uh, the Batman sheets. So that was great. And here I stand before you. Single. <laughs> and, all, and, and with also brand new bottle of lube. So, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Is it on? Ace Cameron Barney. Give it up.